let's call the meeting to order. And um, could I have a motion to approve Alan's minutes from March 21st? I'll move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Okay, great. So from March 26th, when did you say they're from? March 21st. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, the next agenda item is mine. Um, and it is prompted by Judy's um, telling us uh, now two months ago that um, the church was intending to put in a proposal for support for the building, which she's been sending pieces of. Um, and I was thinking about the fact that we have, that this town has not made any historic preservation grants for building work, structure work um, owned by a private entity. Uh, it's perfectly allowable. It's just new territory for us. Um, I should point out that there have been, there have been a lot of open space grants to private entities. There are, and I am talking explicitly about yes. historic preservation. I understand that. Yeah, which is which is this group's only purview. Yep. <laughs> um, so I um, uh, had a chat with Jen Doherty at the Massachusetts Historical Commission, who was very helpful, um, and I would like to uh, propose. Um, and I'd like to propose it first for discussion that if, uh, if we support uh, not just the church proposal, but any proposal for um, work on a structure that is privately held, that we um, require a preservation restriction. Um, Jen said that was perfectly allowable. Um, she said, other towns have done this. And when I said, what form would that take? She said, oh, it would probably take the same form as the restriction uh, that we placed on your town hall. So I went and read the restriction that we have on the town hall, which applies to both the exterior and interior of the building. And I, I think, um, I think that made sense for that building, but I think as a general rule, I would like to propose that we limit any, any requirement to the exterior structure. Um, and that, um, that thinking was prompted actually, Judy, by your comment at our meeting two months ago that you could see a, a place down the road when the church might have to sell the building for another purpose. And it seemed to me that to put a restriction on that limited interior work would make that uh, difficult. Um, so, so you're saying, uh, you're saying the restriction uh, would be on exterior work only? That, that, is my, that is my proposal. And that's what the town hall has? No, the town hall has exterior and interior. In fact, the town hall, preservation restriction is on not just the building, but the plot of land. The town um, hall is, received a lot of work for interior, a lot of money for interior work. Although the, although the state's money, the state, the historical commission's money was only for the window restoration. Um, not sure they looked at it that way, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it was for. Um, so, um, so that's what I'd like to propose and I'd, I'd like discussion. In this case, would that mean you're required to preserve the vinyl siding? I don't think it's funny. The, <laughs> I don't think it could, I'm going to answer, answer a different question. I don't think, could re, think it could require that the vinyl siding be removed because that would be a great expense and difficulty. I think it would, what else is worth saving? The steeple is worth saving. Um, the roof Thank is you. worth saving, right? As would it is. You, 
there's a part of the building. I mean, can we, I mean we really ought to be discussing it as a principle before well, we get I deeply this, into the church. This, this gets into what you require. I mean, it, it's kind of like, what does this mean in context? And it's when you start asking questions like this, like I know for the church in Northampton where they had a preservation restriction when before the court case and you could get CPA money, the restriction applied to the windows that were being restored, not to the whole building. Um, so that's one approach one could take. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually Sarah. surprised by Daugherty's response. I thought she was going to be more specific. She was, she was uh, expansive, but yes, we, could, we certainly could do that. Um, but I know that one, one other requirement um, for a for CP for a pre preservation restriction often or for CPA money, and I'm not quite sure, but for preservation restriction frequently, is that it somehow be for a public good and open to the public. And this has caused problems in some other towns where, where people don't necessarily want to have their building open to the public, but an, an exterior restriction would solve that problem, I assume, because it wouldn't be necessary. Right. I'm just talking here. They're, they're, it's not a simple problem. No, it seems quite fraught, too, because if you did something like specify no vinyl siding, or that it has to remain the siding that it is. What happens, you know, next year when they invent this magic material, you know, that saves the planet and looks great, and you know, have you now boxed them out of using that because? You know, what if they make uh, clabbers that are solar panels, you know, and, and look right. like clabbers? Right, right, right. I think my concern is mostly that, you know, we're talking about using public monies for a private entity and how can we obviously be reasonable, but do everything we can to make sure that we're not allocating public money for something that could be turned over very quickly or undone very quickly. Well, I've always thought that this was an important thing to do. Um, I can tell you in this case that if it extends beyond the windows, then I'm sure the church will not apply for CPA funding. What do, let's, what do other people think? Which is, you know, perhaps not relevant to the discussion, but well, it, it's, is. It, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is relevant. Yeah. I can't speak for sure, but I would not have brought it. I wouldn't, well, I shouldn't say that. The church has certainly not discussed that kind of possibility and I don't yeah. know how they feel yeah. about it. Could yeah. I ask a rookie question, Donna? How, how old does something have to be to be historic? 50 years. So we're all historic. <laughs> okay. I don't know about Land, Susan. Landmark. <laughs> that should that should be in the that should be in the bylaws that it has to it, it has to exceed the median age of the committee members. <laughs> that's older than, that is older that's the than definition. I, I, I bet I think I'm the median. That's my guess. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. I, I just wonder, you know, so it, it, it this would include the diner, for example. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to think of other examples and other situations that could happen if it's only 50 years that includes a lot of stuff it does right. it does um it also uh, although in order to get historic preservation funding um through cpa money it has to be named on the and on macros uh, oh it does or, or on the national register I was or, reading the or determined by the town or right, right. to be a, a right. important property for weight like 
in which case well, that's a lot of criteria then yeah in which case we'd probably be trying to get it named in macros i mean if we thought it was an important history just no it has to be on the state register that's not the same as macros the state register sorry yeah well all right which is it i'm writing this down it's the state <laughs> register it's according to this but, but you did, did you just say it's on it's on it has to be on the state register of historic places yes well that narrows down the possibilities in town then well it doesn't it couldn't, be, it couldn't be made as garage for example which is 50 years old right right but it is in a historic district. Does that make a difference? The well, that, I'm, that's why I'm asking these questions. No. Well, one thing we did in in Weston when we we did several private properties, and the finance committee was very concerned that this would mean any old property in Waitley in Weston would get CPA money, and we developed a list of criteria. Um, mm -hmm. I think in this easy one would be in the National Register District. Um, we, or if it's an important example of its architectural type, or if somebody famous lived there, or or if someone it important obscure lived there. I'm sorry. Or someone obscure who was an enslaved person. Yeah. Well, that's so, important. Yeah. A distinctive. Well, somebody distinctive, maybe. I. I Right. Um, not, I need an adjective, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing about what is historically distinctive, because, of course, the town center um, district includes quite a few capes that I would call undistinguished, uh, most of which are now over 50 years of age. Um, So I think um, Judy's notion that it, now we're talking not so much, now we're really not talking about the church application, we're talking about some sort of filter, should we send the message that we will now accept proposals from private entities to do uh, work on historic buildings that would, um, we're talking about some, series of filters that would narrow the the range of potential applicants to some something manageable <laughs> right oh one, one 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 project we did turn down um roger lipton had requested cpa money for a, an old barn and his, it was on his, his property on his property, and it was outside the National Register, the West Whateley National Register District. Um, and that, was, we that was before I was on the committee, yeah. so I don't know that. Yeah. But we decided that it didn't have any distinction over most of the other barns in town. It, it fell down before anything would happen anyway, but um, we determined it wasn't unique enough or significantly important as in and of itself to, to justify the, the expenditure. Right, um, right. I mean, remember a year or so ago, Alan and I were invited to go across the street and visit his neighbor who bought Bob Duda's property. And that young man was interested in whether money would be available to help restore what he calls his barn, which is a not very interesting barn that needs some work. Um, but then he let us climb through the mill too, which is interesting <laughs> because it's the only surviving, it's the only mill that could really be restored. Um, and I would think this might open up the discussion about that. Um, and that, mm -hmm. is, that is in the West Waitley um, district. I, I was also thinking about the fact that since tobacco barns as a, as a group 
are called out in um, whichever report they're called out in is it the reconnaissance report mm -hmm. uh, as an important historic research resource, you know, wouldn't it, I mean, we're not going to have enough money ever to save every tobacco farm barn that's threatened, but that, that would probably mean that a tobacco barn application could pass a screen, even if not in one of our two historic districts. I mean, I could imagine that. So I, I guess my question generally is, uh, Judy, I think you're, you know, you're in the awkward position of having a proposal to put forward right now. So it's not an abstract discussion, but are you suggesting that if we go down this road, that it would make sense to, res to limit the restriction to the um, parts of the building that had been restored with public funds? That's a tough thing to answer because I think for the church, it definitely would. Um, but I don't know that that would always be the case, and I'm, but I'm not able to think of examples right away. I mean, if, if you say the cemetery barn, which is kind of unique because of the way the, the louvers work, and because of its its very early age, or what was purported to be its early age, you mean um, the, you mean the yellow bar next to the cemetery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, say, say we got the roof blew off. CPA money to replace the roof, but I think you'd want a preservation restriction on the whole barn in that case, right? Because because the building is the roof and walls. <laughs> that's that's yeah. the building, <laughs> right? So. On the other hand, it's kind of hard to do too much to the walls <laughs> in the church, in the old part of the church. That, that's the other thing. Um, the addition is only 20 years old. So, um, well, 30, I guess, but not, certainly not 50 years old. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, I would think that requiring that the windows be preserved would, would go uh, very long way towards preserving the character of the church, with the exception perhaps of the roof. But um... I'm thinking if we were going to put some sort of restriction on the church, what is the most important, what are the most important features to preserve? And immediately the steeple comes to mind. If we have the opportunity to put some sort of restriction in place, yeah, we go to, we give them CPA, we give CPA money, it's used to replace the windows, the windows can't be touched, but some, the church closes, somebody comes and buys the building and knocks down the steeple and puts who knows what on the roof. Have we done the town a disservice by not preserving a part that's an important piece well, of the history of the town? This is a really good example because if if a private person did buy that church, they are not going to want to maintain that steeple. And I've seen many churches, I'm sure you guys have too, where they've fallen, they've gone into private ownership, and uh, you can tell it was a you know a, often a congregational church that used to have a steeple, but now it's got a just a castellated you know tower that's squared off because they took the pointy part down. Because, you know, they didn't want to pay for it. Like the one on North Farm Road. When you take the back, when you take that back road, you go left to go um, from Haydenville Road and it comes out. It, it, was that a schoolhouse or was that a church? But yes, I guess oh, like maybe, that. Maybe it was a schoolhouse, but you no, know I'm which thinking, what I'm, I mean. I'm thinking it's of a church in Connecticut. I can think of a couple of yeah. these. But, the, yeah. you know, this, this, it was a steeple, but it got. Well, I think in some cases it's hurricanes that happened church I went right, to right, admit. Right. But, um, you know, just if there I could is, just, there is a church, ahead. there's a congregational church in Amherst that's now um, owned by a Jewish congregation and they got CPA money for the steeple to repair the steeple. Um, because it was a defining feature of a defining structure yeah, probably, because, you know. Because it clearly yeah. was not part of their religious yeah 
Um, so, so the the next occupant would presumably be all assuming the CPA stays around that, that would be yeah. presumably eligible for CPA funding for that. So I'm remembering that for the years <laughs> that we um, were in negotiation about um, with various parts of the town about the town hall renovation that the historical commission kept writing letters that talked about the important features. And for that building, the important features were, from our point of view, the roof, two of the chimneys, the windows, and the exterior wood, and some of the interior wood. I mean, it was, you know, it was building specific. We we knew what we wanted to save. We didn't care about the little front portico, which we've kept because it's not, but it's not original. You know, it's just convenient because people don't get wet <laughs> when they're waiting to go into the building. Um, for, this is kind of sad given what's happened to it, but for the school, this wasn't about CPA money, but for the school on, um, that had been Frederick Adams um, studio on five and 10, I guess when it changed to be the electric building, electrical uh, contractors building, we wrote and said, we've seen your drawings. We really hope you'll keep the original portico because they had given a, they had sent a plan with parking that was going to remove it. Um, mm. It's funny. I, I, um, I walk past the church all the time and I don't, and I don't want to, make everybody stand here while I get up and peer out my window, but I don't actually remember how much of the front portico is original. Judy, you must know. There is no por front portico. I mean, there's no door surround? Okay. No. And are the doors- I'm sorry. Are the doors original or are they replacements, the front I doors? I have no doors? idea. They're, they're not, at any rate, they're not drop dead gorgeous doors, I take it. They're very plain. Sort of, what yeah. what is the distinctive features that probably other than the windows the um the molding you know the dentition yeah thank you and the the front you mean the, you mean the exterior pilasters yeah the pilasters yeah. and the um band across the top next to the roof and and the surface of the front, which is the same as town hall, and I forget what kind of wood it is, but it's 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 not clapboard. It's it's uh, mm -hmm. just cross pieces of wood, mm -hmm. and there's a word for that that's not coming to mind. But it's in that architectural description I sent you. Yeah. The slate roof, the steeple, the composition of the front, the windows. To, to me, and, one of the unique the trip. Features. I'm one sorry. of the unique features about that building is that it's painted bright white. Can you can you control that? Would you want to control that? I don't think we can because that's not because right. it's like it's like storm windows. It's reversible. Right. I think what we control is, or what a restriction controls, is uh, permanent changes. Right. Right. Okay. Right. I think I, I'm sure that that's true. Hmm. Um, you know, you have an arts council move into town and they'll paint it, uh, you know, magenta. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, um, I, I, I uh, Judy, this is, I'm not being serious when I say this, but because I've, been sitting on the finance committee this spring and I'm already nervous about the South County Senior Center and having another part of the Waitley Town budget enthrall to Deerfield, <laughs> you know, the big heavy handed neighbor. I thought, well, if Judy's right and it won't be a church um, within our lifetimes, you know, maybe it could become a senior center. Um, but that's neither here nor there. That's not, there's nothing serious about what I just said. Uh, so, um, I think, um, 
I think no one has spoken in support of an all encompassing pres preservation restriction. Is that true? I feel like We're that's a, a death warrant. Pardon, okay, I feel like, go ahead, go ahead, Judy. I'm just asking if, if that's a general question about the shape of this. I, I think it's general because I think oh, I think I, I don't I think it would I, I, the reason I wanted to talk about it is it seems to me we should come to some agreement about a general principle and then figure out how to apply it to this proposal. Um, what were you going to say, Susan? I feel like if we make it too strict, that's issuing a death warrant for buildings that would fall under that because no one will want to do the work necessary to maintain the building. And we can't do anything about a building that's left to collapse. Right. Um, well, there's and also a matter of scale. If the church were asking for a half a million dollars, that would be one thing, right? Yeah, I think so. There's also the issue of insurance to, to insure for Complete replacement is is very expensive. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, just for a house, it is. Yes, I know. A house of our age, you know, that's it, when when you after you manage to find an insurance company that will insure it. Um, Alan, you're being quiet. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm being quiet. I'm not sure what to think. I'm trying to figure out what we would gain from preservation restriction of some sort that applied to the exterior only. And that might be you know, how the place looks on the outside. I, I'm not sure. Is there a, what would the town gain from it, if anything? One thing is that with CPA money, you want it to satisfy some public good. And Obviously, the bigger the public good, the more likely people are to vote for it. Um, which, so either in in Weston, we we said it either had to be visible and part of an important streetscape, or uh, just a pristine example of something, an architectural style or something like that. So you you were maintaining, you know, you had extra criteria that weren't visible. But I think the fact that the interior would change wouldn't necessarily matter for the public good as much, especially if it was a private building. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, as Judy says, it already has vinyl siding. <laughs> it's already... It will not meet a standard of pristine from an, from an historic preservation point of view. Um, it seems to me that from a, that one of the church's most um, important features is that it twins the town hall. I mean, that is, you know, that is genuinely interesting. And the interior doesn't twin, certainly doesn't twin the current town hall. Um, well, it, in a way it does. Is there's the double staircase in front and the big hall upstairs and the big windows. Right, but the downstairs doesn't. The downstairs doesn't because because the downstairs of the town, current town hall doesn't match, you know, that's been renovated. It's not. Um, well, they've both, they've both been renovated. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, I should say the old parts of both buildings mirror each other. Right. That's right. The, the additions don't. Yeah. Although I gather the lifts are exactly the same. Um, so I'm I'm thinking, and tell me if this makes sense, since I'm the only one who's had any time 
to think about this idea and you've already helped me to think about how to refine the idea that perhaps we should agree to talk about it again at our next meeting. Um, Judy, perhaps you'd share the Weston document that you're referring to. Yeah, I, I, it, it won't, it doesn't. I have it, in, I have it in bullet points, I think, if I can find my old. Yeah, sounds like it wouldn't be perfect for us, but it's always useful to start with something. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Or, 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 do, or do other people, do people want to continue the discussion and decide, try to decide today what to do? I, I'm seeing like two paths forward, I guess, in my mind. One is, one is the development of a, of a set of formal protocols and rules or filters, whatever we're calling them, to, to make these decisions with, which sounds like that is fraught with challenges. The other is the other is um, an informal sort of set of guidelines for this committee to have of of things things to consider, you know, points to check off if we're talking about the church or the diner or whatever we're talking about. Right. But but the, these things, I mean, thank God, you know, we don't live in some bigger place, but. Uh, that these things really have to be discussed on a case by case basis, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it would really change the game too if you had both. Let's just say the diner and the church come to you at the same moment and want and compete for that money. Then, then it would really come to the front what criteria you wanted to apply and what not to apply. Right. I mean, it's an it's an interesting um, situation that we've had, and, and Judy may correct me since I've, I think I've only been on the CPC since 2015. Um, I I have not been part of any review cycle where we turned down a proposal because we simply didn't have enough money that year to fund the the requested projects. We have said no this doesn't apply you know it's not it's not eligible we've said um we don't think public money should pay for all of this we think the applicant should um coach you know fund some of the project themselves um but can you remember any time judy where a proposal was turned down for a lack of funding in the very very beginning they there were some very large APRs. Okay. And I'm trying to remember. I think that they were cut back as opposed to turned down. Right. Whereas I, I happen to have friends in two other towns, much bigger towns, that sit on the equivalent of this of the CPC, excuse me, and they, you know, they have multi-level screening process that you know they turn things down all the time yeah. we've been we're more often in the process of one of us reaching out when we hear about a good project and saying you know we think actually cpa money could be helpful there yeah, um, on the cpc uh routinely rounds up requests too right right you know sound looks like this budget's pretty tight maybe we should throw in another couple thousand dollars um so um so I think uh, looking at some examples from Weston or wherever else would be helpful to see yeah. how because they, they must have come up against the same the same hurdles and the same problems. Okay. I would suggest that Stuart Saginor and the CPC people might be helpful here. Yes. Um and and uh, it's Community Preservation Coalition, that CPC. <laughs> right, right, right. The state, the state agency. I think that's true, and I will be happy to talk with him. And um, the other thing that Jen, who is the generalist, you know, um, suggested when I told her that we were about to, I, I actually said we're about to receive a proposal from a, a church 
but I'm not actually asking this question because it is a church. It's just the first private request we've had um, for building rehabilitation. And she said that Michael um, Steinitz there has, has done a lot of work, but, but she was really focused on the church aspect of it. And I mean, I don't think we need to, you know, have a discussion about whether windows are about religious practice or building structure. That's pretty easy <laughs> to figure that out. And Steinitz is MHC, not the, the court case for the CPA money established some criteria that are well, maybe they use those for right, but the preservate, but a preservation restriction would fall under the yeah. of the of the MHC. That's why that's why yeah. it makes sense to check with both. So I will be happy to talk to Stuart Saginar, um, and uh, perhaps. And I and maybe um, why don't I also ask about uh, towns, if not as tiny as Waitley, but less wealthy and um, large than Weston, <laughs> you know, somewhere in between to yeah. see if anybody else has dealt with this. I mean, my, my good friend has been on this committee in Arlington for years, but it's not a good, it's not a good analogy. Donna Stewart Saginar is from what group? He's from the Community Preservation Coalition, okay. uh, which is, is it a sort of quasi-government agency, Judy? It, it seems somehow no, to- it's not, it's not, uh, well, maybe. It's a lobby, it's, it's a support group for technical support for towns and a lobby group. Um, they work with, it's a consortium of several, Agency specifically, how uh, housing is, is a big part of it. Right. Uh, Remember, sometime last year when I had spent a lot of time going through an index of grants that had been made uh, for various purposes. Um, that was that was maintained. That is maintained by the CP Community Preservation Coalition, and they sometimes do <laughs> workshops. They sometimes do workshops. Yeah, yeah and they um, have. Uh, well, they're the ones who. Printed that eligibility letter. Mm -hmm. well, could you shut the front door, please? Mm -hmm. Upstairs. Front door. We're about to get hammered with a storm here. Uh, I hope you're right. Blowing. I hope oh. you're right. Oh, nice. That looks good. <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, Should we make? Any? Yes. Are there if, any other towns where this kind of preservation restriction or? Uh, has been implemented other places that have faced the same kinds of issues that you know well i mean jen doherty said to me that i could speak with michael steinitz about a number of towns where cpa money has been used to fund work at churches and preservation restrictions yeah. have been applied so if there are a number of those there is a larger number <laughs> who've done something it's about yeah one thing that's happened over the years, uh, initially with the CP CPA, it was felt to be a requirement that you had to, had to have a preservation restriction for all properties, municipal and town. And gradually that's been relaxed. And I, first for municipal properties, and then now it doesn't appear anywhere that I can find. And I, I'm, that's another thing you might talk to Stuart about whether about you know, about the, about the trajectory about the trajectory because I don't know whether it was just found to be too onerous. Um, the other thing is once you have a restriction, somebody has to administer it. Right, right. It would have to be and, this. I think it would have to be this commission. And that, that would, means that, that means it. that somebody has to monitor what goes on and and keep an eye on it and be prepared to right. be the enforcer, which isn't right. I mean, in, in Eastern Massachusetts, some of this is easier because there's so much more use of a local historical district framework where, which gives much more control about, you know, 
as, you know, the colors of the mailboxes, wh whatever people want to control. Um, and we don't have that, and which is fine. Um, yes, I'd be happy to look into that. So, um, shall we continue this discussion in June? I think so, yeah. I want some time to think about it. Yep. Examples. Okay, okay. Agreed. Okay. I think Alan is talking about delaying the, the CPA, CPC meeting till maybe July anyway, because he doesn't see any need to have, have it right on the day after the applications are due. Okay. If, if several of us are gonna be away. Well, I, he has to, he's stuck in any case because I'm gonna be away and you're gonna be away and somebody has to be Brian Domina. Yeah, well that's- <laughs> Since we don't have staff support, <laughs> you know. That's, that's why I think yeah. he's- Yeah, I, What I'm trying to say is, I think that would CPC be. CPC will I, not necessarily meet before before our June meeting. I, I think it would be ideal for us to continue this conversation and come up with some you know, consensus so that the church's application doesn't get caught, so that we don't hold up the CPA review process. Um, yeah, I think that would be ideal. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, okay, so Judy, do you want to move on to your the church project? <laughs> no, <laughs> or not, or not. <laughs> well, I I guess I can. I don't know how much detail you want to go into. Um, it is to restore the windows. I sent you the diagram of what would be involved. Um, these windows are very are in many ways like the ones at the town hall in that they have very narrow mountains. And I know from trying to replace windows in this house with narrow mountains and narrow frames that the typical window maker can't do it. I think it's their machinery just isn't set up for it. You you wind up with much thicker mountains or the snap-on kind, which um only are on the inside and look terrible. I was going to say um, they make they make vinyl siding look good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about the church when they did the vinyl siding is they they left the wood corner pieces and trim. So anyway, um, we we got a bid from the most highly recommended window restorer for. These, this type of institutional building, I think. And it was, it's for including all the options, paint, paint removal and painting and install, installing the insulated glass. It comes to just over $34,000, um, $34,550. Um, we're adding a 10% contingency, which brings it us up to 38,000. And the details and in, in what's involved are in the bid spec. This, this uh, Scott Hillock with P Pisca, the name of the firm has changed, but it's, a, it's the same firm that did the town hall windows. He's just finished a project at Historic Deerfield. Um, he was working at, at the Emily Dickinson Museum when, I, when he came to look at the windows. Um, the website has buildings at Amherst College and all sorts of projects you can look at. So I don't know if you have questions. Um, I'm sure you talked to Neil about the windows at Town Hall, right? Didn't you? I talked I, about the storms. The storms. So, so he, Allison, he, just to bring Allison up to date, we were originally proposing um, a, a different um, replacement approach um, to be done by the same firm, 
which would have uh, deconstructed each window, saved the muntins and the framing and the sills, and replaced the individual glass panels with a single panel of thermal. Which is what that's, that's the same as this. And that's what you're that's what that's what the church is proposing. That isn't what was done. Um, that and, and Amherst College and Dartmouth College and all kinds of places that have enough money to make choices have done that. Um, late in the process, I think Alan and I were the ones sitting out in the heat with the guy whose name I've forgotten from Mass Historical Commission. The Mass Historical Commission said they wouldn't fund our, our, the window renovations unless we did what we did at the town hall, which is to keep the original glass and repair the wood and then add storm windows. So, um, okay, that's fine. But you know that the storm windows have had a really serious delamination problem. You've heard that? No. Um, pardon? Nope. I do. But. Yeah, I, I was asking Judy. I mean, it, it, it's, um, I don't know how many windows have been affected, but it's uh, a lot more than one. And um, so far it's been covered under warranty. Um, uh, I hope it, I hope we don't get to the point where it goes beyond warranty because what happens is if you look at the windows, you know, you're looking at the building a lot, you're in the building, you suddenly notice that you see these sort of colored lines and it's because of a separation. Yeah. But that's in the storm windows, not in the window windows. That's in the storm windows. Yeah. And they are single pane and the lamination is not sealed inside. Right. And right. in one set, the lamination was applied on the outside rather than right. I mean, they just did it. one whole set wrong. I mean, yeah. Yes. Um, so, which is yeah. Um, it's so amazing. you're so you're that's not. Are you saying that's not going to be an issue with the the approach? Well, I've that never you're... I've never heard. I mean, this guy's been doing this for for years and and hasn't had any issues like that. Mm -hmm. That would be okay. true of all. It would be true of all double pane windows if with the energy seal inside. I mean. It's not necessarily related to, to the, in this case, it has nothing to do with the restoration process. Right. I mean, it's a possibility. It doesn't happen all the time. You know, well, I've never so, heard of it happening anywhere else in any yeah. window, but um, yeah. Yeah. they fog up sometimes, but that's not. Right. Right. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and we are actually talking to that same same um, storm window manufacturer, but because the the insulated windows would have the the laminated coating, they wouldn't be an issue on the storms. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I um, gather it's I gather from talking to my brother, who's an architect, that it's quite rare to have single single pane glass with with that kind of a coating on it. Um, other questions about, I mean, we don't have Judy's full proposal. We have all of her notes so far. Other questions well, you've about You've got all the substance of it, but not the, nothing to tie it together. I'm sorry. I feel like we have to resolve the bigger issue first before we can make a decision. I think we're talking about eligibility for CPA funding and our issue is whether we require. I'm sorry. Yeah, Go ahead. our issue is whether we're going to require a restriction or not. But on on the face of it, this looks like it follows the flowchart that um, Donna sent a couple of yesterday or, or the day before. Uh, if the place is on the state register of historic places, I think it is. It is. Yeah. It's, it's in the National Register district that puts yeah. it there. Okay. Now, on, on the face of it, it, it seems to qualify. It's whether we want to add any, any additional restrictions on, uh, on preservation. And that's not necessarily, that, that's not something we're going to come to today. 
but whether that's part of the whole process, I'm not sure. Well, that's a good point, Alan, because you could decide that it's eligible. So we could submit the application. Mm -hmm. And then if, with the caveat that it may require restriction, and then if the church decides it doesn't want to deal with the restriction and could pull the application. Um, I think if we want to go that route, if we want to vote on eligibility, I would prefer to say that um, we've taken a preliminary vote, but um, it's going to sound a bit technical, that we haven't yet seen the formal application because I don't think if we meet again in when we meet again, we decide we don't want to apply any sort of res restriction, then I don't think it would have been helpful to raise that as a possibility. And I don't think we should put it out there <laughs> as a possibility until we have decided. I think we could simply say we've had a lot of information from Judy about the church's pending application and we'll look at the formal application when it's together. But it looks to us like it's eligible. I don't think you would need to say that actually at this point. You don't think we do because you think we're not gonna meet, the CPA is not gonna meet in two weeks or three weeks. Yeah, I mean, the application has to be in by June 7th, but. Right. Uh, and I can just leave the thing blank or say that it's been discussed, but I don't necessarily have to say it's been approved. Well, and in fact, the form is ambiguous because it's exactly what it says. Name the form, our form says, name the entities with which this proposal has been discussed. We get many proposals that name entities that have never heard of them, whatever the thing is. Um, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, um, and I, I think actually perhaps it should ask for a sort of check off, you know, endorsed or not endorsed, but that's not what it says right now. So we've certainly discussed it. Well, thank you for the time. Okay, any, any other- How should we leave this then for our minutes? That we're we're going to do more research on okay vote and 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 uh, decide okay. something okay at our June meeting. Yep, got that. I mean, I don't think it should take us. You know, I don't think it should take us more than two discussions. Although we did have a scenic road situation. Um. So, uh, hidden history. Um. Susan, what would you like to know? <laughs> so I asked for this to be put on the list because we are now one month out and I want to make sure that you have what you need from the 250th committee that you're providing. I know that Ashley had asked or has been working with you, Donna, on and what Allison. you, you yeah. want. Okay, what you want us, you want the 250th committee to distribute I didn't have any particular issues other than making sure we are supporting however you need support. So, so w where we are on that front is um, I had a really nice long conversation with Ashley uh, three weeks ago, I think. And we talked about the fact that we're kind of a square peg in a round hole because nearly, not quite all, but nearly all the other 250th activities are events that take place at a certain time. And mm -hmm. whereas what we're doing is launching something that we hope will continue mm -hmm. and evolve. And she understood that. And I said, so look, just tell me, you know, how many words you want or how much space you want us to fill by what date and we'll do that. And she has now told us that for, she's given us some guidance about how much, oh, and the other thing she understood is that we would like as we develop our own marketing, which um, is not developed yet, but we've been talking about it, uh, unless Allison did it while she was eating lunch today. Um, <laughs> I didn't have lunch yet. I didn't have lunch today. <laughs> Uh, that we would like whatever um, 
whatever material is embedded in the 250th event to look like whatever we're going to use going forward. And she understood that too. I mean, she she knows marketing stuff. Oh, she's she and is you've had awesome. One, you've had one little exchange with her since that, Allison, right? I think right. since then, yes. Uh, well, you know, I never did hear back from her again, Donna. Remember that? Yeah, she's not. She's she's um, she, she loses track. <laughs> you have to. Yes, right. You wrote to her and said. Well, we, actually, we asked Susan. Susan, we asked if um, yeah. we could supply. She she offered us space in the special issue of the scoop that is being done. Mm -hmm. the anniversary June issue let's call June it third yes and um, mm -hmm. said we could have 100 or 150 words which was great and then we asked if we could just supply a pdf that you would plug into that you know as a done designed thing instead of giving you raw text and she answered me i don't think she quite understood what i was asking she seemed to think i was asking for a special completely separate insert that's right. She, quote, she quoted us prices for one full page or two full Which is pages. not what we're asking for. We're just, if, if you're giving us a certain amount of real estate in, in your issue, let's, let's say it's eight square inches, then can we, can we supply something that fits whatever space you say um, as a ready-made thing? And that's and you wrote back and she hasn't answered you. No, I have not. Yeah, seen see that happened to me too. I think, I think uh, this is not a criticism of Ashley. She seems... No. Uh, lovely and um and so that's why I, I hesitated because i couldn't remember where that and it's felt fallen off my radar too because i i was waiting to hear something back i'm checking right now to make sure it hasn't gone into my spam so what I, that what I did what i did when she did that was just to ping her again and say right, you know, right, I, I really right. do yeah. need to know <laughs> yeah to me, the answer to that question is more of a scoop question than a you know, or a printing question, rather than well, we're fine with whatever the content is. But that said, Joyce has allowed us to put in like the Waitley 250 logo and other. Well, she puts ads in. You know how she puts the, the ads from the advertisers yeah. in. It yeah. would be like that. We, it, she would insert sure. our thing just as if it was an ad. Let's say we just need to know the dimensions so that when we well, do the layout, we have the space. I was and looking I for guidance from you all about how much real estate. I mean, you want to give us a quarter page, a half a page, an inch. You know what is it? Okay, we are meeting on Wednesday. Okay. Um, either she or I will email you after that meeting because yeah, I don't I mean, want to give you an answer that I just pulled out of thin air. No, 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 no. That's fine. And I'm not going to do it tonight anyway, but we'll, we'll use as much yeah. space as you can give us. I just have no idea what, what all your, you, you can afford. Okay. And, and she, she had said 50 to a hundred words. Or a hundred to 150 words. It was bigger. I mean, it was, it was a spread. It was a yes, spread. Right, and, right. and, and we haven't actually talked about this, but I thought at the time, oh, that's well, funny. maybe we don't want to just have words. We want to have a thumbnail right, from right. the, from the map and we want to have right, fewer right. words, but it's just right. how much, but we certainly don't. So, so I'm hoping for your sake, Susan, that Joyce is not designing these pages. You are designing <laughs> No, I'm really serious because we, well, Joyce, we, Joyce accomplishes the scoop and inserts those ads somehow. So we, yes. we will just give her if, if I need the 250th people to say, oh, well, we only have room for them to have a quarter of a page like everybody else. And then I'll know what size to make it. Or okay. you say we have unlimited space. They can have three miles. Then we'll take that. I mean, we okay. could we could be the footer, you know, be a whole page. We could be a whole page if you have a whole page. We'll be whatever you say we should be. I will get back to you after Wednesday. Um, Lisa, who was the third member of that committee, um, is good at doing layout and things like that. So the two of them will have much better ideas on on this than I do. Yeah, yeah. and and she said she, whatever. She said that you would need whatever we did by June thirtieth, June third. Excuse June, me, June thirtieth. So I'm sorry. Late. I'm sorry. <laughs> June third. So it isn't like we have to. I mean, we probably need to know by next week, right? Is that fair? As I said, we're meeting Wednesday, so I'm hoping Not, that we don't have to know tomorrow. 
Okay. Today is today. Today's the 16th. Well, this this whole thing is going to come together from several different angles. You know, we right. need to have a right, Alan. We got to we're going to probably print some kind of URL for this thing, yeah. and um, you know, so we're we're not quite ready to do it anyway. How much space would you like if you picture the average half food? a page? We're like, not going to get ahead. They're only doing two. She asked me what I'd like. <laughs> I, that's why, but that's why I asked. You don't always it's like Santa Claus. You don't always get what you want. But right. I want to know what sort of the starting point. Well, is. here's what I can promise you. You know, if you give us half a page, it won't be just plain clunky text. We'll have images, and it, it'll enliven your publication. We'll make your We'll make it, you know, we'll hold up our end of the space. We have images. <laughs> we have images. Would you want a full page insert? We can we could do that if I'm you I, no. I just didn't imagine Donna, it doesn't matter. We can do a whole page for sure. We, we what I'm the, thinking with the full page print. insert is somebody can pull out and keep, which gives them access to the no, information. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna keep it. I, I I didn't mean an insert, I meant a, a page in your in your uh, thing, but but I assume an insert would cost extra money. It does, but there's also money. You're you're part of a bigger budget. How much how much of your budget have you spent? Because you had a thousand. Well, we're still working on that because we're 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 kind of in the home stretch, and we really need our web designer to be helping us with things that are evolving. So yes, we're at a very nervous making day. Right, today. we're like an eight months pregnant here. Yeah, it's it's very. And you're asking me what I'm spending on baby stuff. Lots. And and, and <laughs> Alan Alan is either going to talk with the town's website manager or murder him in the next day. <laughs> you might need legal fees. So okay, well. Don't ask us <laughs> right now. Does that? Some, I mean, Alan, how many hours have you spent in the last three days? Uh, I don't know, three or four, probably all told. Oh no, you're lying. Uh, no. <laughs> no, you're lying. <laughs> I mean, as far as the money goes, I don't want to say money is no object, but in the last 24 hours, an additional $6,000 landed in our laps. Well, I'm not saying we can give you $6,000, but money is still coming in. We've got money and we will be returning a lot of money. I was going to say, but but from the town's point of view, giving the money back would be good. Donna, <laughs> as, as we as will be aside, giving back a lot. Donna, but, is, is the historical society doing a thing to insert in this as well no they haven't been asked i don't think i don't know but i don't think they've been asked because they're the the historical society's event which judy arranged is peter thomas's talk and well i'm uh, saying if we did an insert also, we could gang this stuff together yeah what if judy are you still there your picture went away yeah i am i I'm um, gone dark. I'm okay. very low battery, so I want to. Get it we don't. We don't need your picture. We as long as we know you're there. Well, no, it's not that. But um, you need me to talk. Um, I wish I'd known because in a, we do have an event, which is the exhibit. So right, um, you've got two. You've got two things. That's yeah. right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I'm wondering well, if the two things making... together make a page. Yeah, as long as we're making cookies, we might as well make enough cookies for everybody. And if she, if the committee can give us our own special page, we'll take care of designing it, and and that will relieve Ashley and everybody else of trying to shoehorn us into their layout and so forth. It's it's, it's good to be king. I'm going to make the executive decision. Be queen. Why don't you be queen? <laughs> what is a gender neutral Mon royal commodore okay I'll, I'll be the mon i'll be the monarch here um i just gave the two i'm looking at the two of you meaning the two organizations back to back a page that's a lot that's fine you you can print only on one side if you want no 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 we're using both sides Go at it. Have it to us before June third. All right, Donna. It's it's so information. That makes our no, no, no. I think okay. that's good. I think that's great. Judy, are you good with that? Sure. Yeah. The rest of the information, Donna, is already exists. We're just recycling it. Essentially, it's the hidden no, no. history part that we have to create anyway. No, but you're gonna have. You don't have. There are a lot of photos you could have for the objects and things. 
we're good. We'll and be, would we? We won't. We won't want. We'll have plenty of stuff to put in. So yeah, should not, so should we stuff. should we leave Peter Thomas, in since that is a one off event in whatever Ashley and Lisa are putting together, which presumably is going to be organized in some sort of mm -hmm. yes. focused way, <laughs> you know. And I think Peter. that makes sense. That if we leave the lecture in the the regular part. Yeah. And your pull out or however it is yeah. that is dedicated to the two ongoing events. So, so so yours so you had in mind at least four pages, obviously. Your special we edition. Gotten, we honestly haven't gotten that far. That's going to be Wednesday, but I think it was going to have to be four pages. Well, we already have because I mean, if collection. it's only two, you can't have an insert. <laughs> You know, we, you know, we staple it on. We staple it. We we, already now have, then they have four pages, you know. Right. We already have a freestanding page, which is the actual schedule of events with all the sponsors logos on the back. Um and Allison, let me know if Quan Quan wants to be on the sponsor list because the deadline was actually yesterday. Oh yeah. I, I I'm sorry. We've been just overwhelmed with stuff here. Yeah, but I don't think go... we need to be, but but I'll I'll let you know. You needed okay, a number yeah. for me. Their their yeah. centennial event yesterday was very nice. Fred told me well, no, was Fred, that the, oh, no, Fred no, that was wasn't the centennial. The, Fred was okay. at the okay. Connecticut was River Conservancy. Yeah. 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 He liked what he went to more than I liked teaching the class that I was teaching that night. Yeah. Uh, anyway. We had champagne, that's why. Oh, oh, we didn't know about that one. Let me know, no pressure. It's not that we need the money if you want the visibility and to be associated right, with right, right. the event. Right, I'll make um, myself a note. And then, so there will be at least one page insert, which is the schedule and the sponsors. We can easily have a second page insert or if that becomes a two page piece that I leave to somebody else to figure out. And then we'll have the body, which will have the description of all of the events and all the text. And we can put the um, Canterbury Tales in that part, I think. Unless there's something you want to feature bigger. I think I think it, I was reading Peter Thomas's description again. And although I think all of us know that the Canterbury Tales reference is an inside joke because one of the very first neighborhoods <laughs> in Waitley uh, was, Can is, was named Canterbury. I was looking at his description and thinking that maybe for the general audience, it might be nice for that description to make that clear because Definitely. I think it has been, it confused Ashley when I, I was, uh, I talked with her a little bit about the shorthand she was using because she thought it was something about medieval England. You know, I mean, well, who wouldn't? You know, I, okay. I've, only, I've only known about oh. the neighborhood for I, three I and a half. I cringed when I saw the title. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if if he you just thought it sounded it sounded you know tricky, tricky, and so he used it. He didn't really think it through. Right, right, right. And that's yeah. So well, let us know if possible by Wednesday what if it should be called something different because we're going to start laying out. After oh, Wednesday. I wasn't suggesting we should change his title because okay. it's his talk. I was suggesting that the half page, half a paragraph that illuminates the title uh, be rewritten <laughs> to explain that. Okay. Um, I'm warning you, it's really getting fierce here if I lose yeah. internet. Okay. If we lose power, we'll lose internet. That would be very exciting because I have to go into a three hour meeting very soon and it would be so terrific if it couldn't happen. I can um, suggest that you arrange a, a, a time to resume if power goes, or, well, you'll probably be the only one, but I um, went out for a planning we, board meeting once and it was disastrous because we didn't have any idea of when to continue or what, what to do. Right. Yeah. No, that's a good what idea. What else is on our what, agenda here? The only, there's nothing else on our agenda unless somebody wants to put something else in, I sh but the next the one. I, the I one just want to say, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. The one other thing is our next meeting is conflicting with the dedication at the library. June 20th? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I'm hoping all of you will be there, Allison. I'm particularly hoping you will be I'm, there. I'm out of town, Susan. I'm in New Hampshire. Oh no, you're not going to be there to ded dedicate the panorama. Oh no, I teach. I teach up in the White Mountains. That that period. Oh okay, okay. Well, um, we've... okay. Well, uh, I I think staying with Mondays is good because we all have complicated lives and standing meetings on other nights. We could, I could meet on either the 13th or 27th. Um, I, would root, I would vote for the 27th because the 13th is gonna be hell week for us. I thought you and Fred were gonna be drinking heavily on the 27th. That's I don't I promise have. to be sober, but at least <laughs> I promise to, I can't promise, but I That's expect I to be heard. there. I don't expect to be there on the 13th um who knows where i'll be probably under a rock somewhere and, hiding from everybody and, and judy if you are right and i'm sure you are about moving the cpa meeting and thinking about the other our earlier discussion then cpc meeting rather than that would move it to july 13th right the second wednesday yeah yeah so uh, is the 27th okay for everybody else fine with me I'm fine with that. Judy, are you okay? You're not sure? Okay. Well, I, I would really like to get down to the Cape sometime, but um, I can do it from there. Okay, good. Then let's do that. I'll tell Amy to change it on the calendar. Um, the other thing, the 20th is also Juneteenth and it's the first year that the town is having that as a holiday and I'm not, I don't actually love that we keep meeting on holidays, although none of us seem to care about holidays. Somehow I particularly dislike meeting on that one um, this year. So, okay, uh, it's raining. Should we say goodbye? Sounds good. Okay, thanks. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. <laughs>